Hello, no coders. Let's get started with the first part of this course. Let's first set up our Superbase vector database. Create a Superbase account for free. You can either use email or GitHub. I would recommend using GitHub because we, we need the GitHub account for hosting FlowWise later on as well. So pause here, create your GitHub account first and then create a Superbase account. We will then go ahead and create a new project. And once the new project is created, Note down your project API key here and your project URL, which are needed when we work with Flowwise. And then let's head to SQL editor tab here and click on add new query. And we wanna rename these untitled query as match underscore documents. And then we wanna copy and paste these following code into this editor. So just go ahead, use the link and then get the code there. Copy this entire code into the editor and we want to hit run. And now you have a vector data table named documents and a query named match underscore documents. So remember these or keep the tab open. We'll use these two names later as well. Now let's go to OpenAI, create an account. And what you want to do is head to the top right corner and click view API key and you want to create a new secret key and note it down at a safe place for later use in part two when we work with Flowwise. And this is pretty much the first part of our setup. Now let's move on to hosting our Flowwise and setting up the core functionality of Flowwise with three different chat flows. So the tool we want to use to host Flowwise is uh, Railway. You, there are a bunch of different hosting services that you can use, but Railway is very simple that I have prepared a template for you. It's it simply just take a couple clicks. So here you can see you need a GitHub account to use Railway. Uh, but if you already created one for your Superbase login as well, simply just use that. And just log in with your GitHub account. Now use this link. I will leave it down below in the description box. Use my template below to deploy and host your own Flowwise. You can add your username and password variable if you want to prevent others to use your Flowwise through your domain. Now you can access your own Flowwise interface from either the railway app domain that just comes by default, or you can add your own custom domain here. Either way will work. And simply click on the link and log into your own Flowwise if you have uh, username and password protection. But otherwise, you should be able to just see your Flowwise posted at this URL already. You can find your railway domain or add your domain from this settings tab. Okay, now let's set up our PDF upsert chat flow for Flowwise first. The PDF upsert chat flow on Flowwise is there to handle uh, the functionality where a user can upload their PDF and then we send that PDF into this chat flow and then the chat flow will process that PDF and upsert that into our knowledge base. So this is what this chat flow is for and it's only for this functionality. So let's create this new chat flow and then we just name it PDF upsert. Okay, so you can download and load the following PDF upsert Superbase chat flow JSON file that I have prepared. So basically if you load it up, if you download these and load it up here, it will all the flow, all the nodes are already connected and set up for you. So you, you can use that link. It's part of the course material that I have provided. Now you can create and plug your OpenAI API key here, which we have prepared in the previous steps, right? So have your OpenAI key ready here and create that. And you want to plug that into OpenAI embedding node and also the OpenAI node here. And now we also want to plug, uh, create and plug Superbase API key here. And you want to paste your Superbase project URL here. So as you can see the match document and document, uh, the table name and also the query name, I've already put them there. So you don't have to do anything about it. The rest of the Flowwise chat flow nodes, you don't have to worry about. But if you are curious, I'll just quickly walk through what this chat flow is doing. So basically your, your user's PDF file is gonna be uploaded here. So that's why we leave it blank. We're not really uploading any PDF file. And once they do their API call from the Flutterflow side, we'll put that here. And basically this recursive character text splitter will chunk that PDF into different chunks. And once we have that, we're gonna 
observe that we're going to process that document and then turn them into embeddings with OpenAI. And once you have the embeddings, we're going to we're going to observe that into our Superbase table documents. Once the user asks questions, we can retrieve the information from these knowledge base. And with OpenAI, we can then generate responses. This is already a working chatbot. If you just want to, for example, we can test it here and then we can upload a PDF here and then straight away just start chatting with this chatbot here that you can see. But we'll, we are not using that because we do want users to be able to interact with the custom UI. That's why we just want to leave the PDF part blank and then we're going to send a file into here through an API call later. So this is what this upsearch chat flow is doing. And now let's move on to a website upsearch chat flow. First, let's create a new chat flow and name it website upsearch. And we want to download and download the template I've prepared and load it into here. So it is quite similar to the PDF upsearch flow. We want to plug your OpenAI key, which you already created here. So basically, when you, once you create the OpenAI key here once, you can use it on every single chat flow on your FlowWise. So you can see that we already have the OpenAI API here and we just plug that into the OpenAI embedding node and the OpenAI node. And we can create and we can plug the Superbase API key here. And we want to put the same project URL and into the Superbase option document node. It's pretty much similar to what we have with the PDF upsert flow, except instead of using a PDF loader, we use the Cheerio web scraper, and then the URL, basically the user will send that into here through an API call. And we'll do a HTML to markdown text splitter, basically to chunk the content that's scraped here and then upsert that into our Superbase. So that's a very similar flow for uh, PDF, but this chat flow is specifically set up to handle the website URL part because it is not simply just loading something. It, it, we have to go there and scrape the website and then chunk them into different chunks. Okay, now we have the part, the upsert part done, right? So these two chat flow, the user can upload their PDF or scrape a website that they want to scrape and upsert that into our super base knowledge base. Now we need to set up a query flow where it's handling the Q&A part. So let's create a new chat flow and name it universal query. I name it universal because this same query can be used for both uh, information from the PDF or a website because once those information is upserted into the vector database as embeddings, it doesn't matter if it was originally from a PDF or it was from a website. So we call that universal query and download and load the following universal query super based chat flow. Uh, template that I have prepared and load that into here and plug your OpenAI API key here into the embedding node and OpenAI node and plug the Superbase API here, plug your project URL into the Superbase load existing index node. As you can see, this is not an upsert node anymore. It is called load existing. This chat flow is uh, much simpler because this chat flow is basically just gonna handle the questions the user sent. We're basically gonna search through our embeddings and get the relevant information and then use OpenAI, the ChatGPT model, to then uh, formulate and generate a response back to our user. And we're ready to go here. So let's now continue to the next part of our course where we will be connecting Flowwise with Flutterflow, make them work together. If you need more support for the content in this part of the course, join my Discord channel, post your questions. I'll usually respond within 24 hours. So I will see you in part two. Ciao.